Welcome everybody to the March 14th, 2022 special meeting of the Southampton Village Planning Board to discuss and consider recommendations to the Village Board of Trustees regarding 44 Meeting House Lane, part of the Hamptons application. So the way we're going to structure this meeting is I'm, when I'm done uh, talking. Can, can we get a motion to open the meeting, please? Yes, get a motion to open the meeting, please. A uh, second. So. Did, Tony, did you make that motion? Yes, I'd like to make an, a motion to open the meeting. Okay. And then we have a second. All I'll in second. favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Jane? Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Need you for the quorum. Okay, so um, the way we're going to structure tonight, we're, I'm, when I'm done talking, I'm going to turn it over to Alec. Wallach to give a brief introduction to the application and um, then we'll hear from Linda Riley, the applicant's attorney, and then we're going to turn it over to Kathy to put some documents on the screen that, with issues that we need to discuss. And um, if there's anybody from the public in the audience, they're welcome to listen, but we're not going to open tonight's meeting to public comment because there's going to be plenty of opportunity for that when site plan review comes up. Um, and then there's also the opportunity to do written comment throughout this period. So Alex, are you ready to give us a overview? Sure, so thank you for that. Um, so as uh, Mr. Chairman said, this is a special meeting to discuss 44 Meeting House Lane. Um, and the reason that we're gathered here today uh, is there's a relatively uh, recent uh, village local law that creates a special exception use for a food pantry among other uses. Um, and that's an application that's made to the village trustees. And part of uh, the code says uh, when an application is made, it's referred to the planning board for its recommendation. So the purpose of tonight's meeting um, is to review the application and make a recommendation to the trustees. So it's a little bit different of uh, a type of application than you may be used to, to doing. So we're not being asked to approve or disapprove a site plan. Um, that will come later if and when the trustees approve this use. Um, it's really in an advisory capacity to make a recommendation um, to the trustees. So in consideration of that um, the special uh, exception use, there's a series of general criteria uh, in the code that I think we'll, the applicant will probably address and then we'll, we'll look through. Those criteria um, apply to all special exception uses, uh, some of which are um, to, to trustees, others are issued by the Board of Appeals. And then there's a set of specific uh, criteria that apply specifically to food pantries um, that we'll take a look at as well. Tim, was there anything else that we wanted to address or did you want to, um, to open it up for any questions the board has at this point? Does the board have any questions at this point? I think we should. Um, we're going to go into this in much more detail, but if there are any questions with, with anything that Alex has said, bring them up now. And I'll mention, uh, as Mr. Chairman said, this is not um, a public hearing. This is just a, an opportunity for the board um, to make, issue a recommendation to the trustees. The reason why we're doing this as a special meeting is that the trustees have scheduled this for a special hearing. They're gonna be hearing this on the 29th in two weeks. Um, and there wouldn't have been enough time for the board to take a look at this in, um, in the course of their normal meetings. Uh, but the trustees meeting will be a public hearing. So the public will be able to comment at that point. Um, and if and when the special use is approved at that point, it'll come back to this board for a typical site plan review, in which case the board can schedule a public hearing. So will be, those will be the opportunities where um, this will come back to this board. Yeah, I guess I have a general question about um, the recommendation that we're making. Is it because in other matters, it's a recommend approval, recommend not approve or recommend with conditions. Is this just a straight we're recommending, you know, what it, what is entailed in the recommendation or not. You know so what I mean? Is it, is it yay something. or nay, or is it a, it, you know, is it like other applications where we could approve it with uh, recommend other recommendations that we make based on our discussion, or is it just thumbs up or thumbs down? My understanding is that it can, <laughs> is that it can be either of those things. If there's specific issues that the board uh, feels are appropriate, they could recommend it and make those specific recommendations uh, to the trustees. 
um, I think that um, that's certainly possible. Yeah, I, the I, the board is basically asking for our expertise because we're we're a board that has expertise that they don't, and they're they're it's it's really in their hands to decide. But they're asking us to review everything as we would any other application and make recommendations to them. Um, I think I should also mention that, that we're we're really making recommendations. They and and if we don't do it tonight, we're going to sort of lose our opportunity to do it because they'll most likely move ahead. Um, and that's why by the end of the night, I'd like to have a list of our recommendations ready to type up and send over to them. Okay. Yeah, that answers it. Thank you. Okay. We're not voting on anything. Tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's what I was wondering. Is it a strict criteria? Does this meet the, you know, five or so special exception criteria? Or is it more, you know, general, you know, how we view this and, and how we view if it, if it meets those special criteria? Well, I think that I think that we will have opinions on those special criteria. And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. Okay, got it. Thank you. Sure. I could just add there's very specific requirements for a food pantry use that this use meets that they have to be, you know, within a certain distance of a zoning district, you know, a business zoning district. Uh, there's, a, there's a few of those. And then the more general ones can be even more subjective in cases. So there is some things to be weighed by the planning board. Um, so we'll, um, the applicant will go through all of those actually. So. And there may be questions that you know we can discuss after that. So, do you think we should have Linda come in now and give us an overview of her of the letter that she sent with the application? Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm bringing her in. And to the rest of the board, there's a pretty comprehensive email sent out with attachments that you should have received that have some really um, informative color renderings and a lot of text to digest, but it's a pretty complete email with attachments to get you up to speed. I recommend going through it if you haven't yet. Hi, Linda. Hi, how are you? I'm well, so, how are you? Very well, thank you. So uh, that was a good introduction by Alex. Um, I will just um, sort of elaborate on what the conditions are. Again, as he said, it's the, it's the board of trustees that will determine whether or not this application meets the criteria, both the general criteria and the special criteria. Uh, and as to whether or not they're going to issue this special exception permit, but um, they, the law requires that they uh, seek your input on this. And so um, I'll get right down first to some of the general criteria um, because I, I think that's, it's, it's more generalized and maybe something more uh, the, particular to you in terms of things that you might want to opine on. Um, so my memo does, the, the, the application that was submitted to the Board of Trustees, which is what you have received today, a copy of, um, does outline specifically each one of the general criteria in the code that have to be met on any special exception application, not just this one. Some of them apply to this use, some of them not so much, but the, the very first of the criteria is that the, that the use is in harmony with and promotes the general purposes and intent of the zoning code as a whole. And uh, it refers to section 116-1 of the zoning code. And 116-1 of the zoning code 
which again is just sort of generalized purposes and intent of the code. And what we're talking about here is whether or not this application uh, meets those general purposes and intents. So uh, the, very, the very first of those is basically uh, to uh, guide uh, and regulate the orderly growth, development, and redevelopment of the municipality in accordance with the comprehensive plan. So um, I did uh, offer some commentary here on, on the co comprehensive plan, which uh, we pulled out and reviewed in the context of this application. Um, the uh, primary goal, according to the comprehensive plan, which uh, was stated on page 53 of the uh, plan is, 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 is follows. The village of Southampton must be maintained as a small scale attractive community in which the pattern and quality of land uses and the quality of life reflect the needs of the residents, institutions and other interested village groups. So, uh, the emphasis is, is on the community as a whole, uh, both its residents, its institutions, and it, its constituents, its people. Um, it, it, it goes on to st state things like the development and land utilization must fit with the existing pattern of development. I think there's quite a bit in the comprehensive plan that emphasizes uh, preservation of the existing character of the community as of that time when it was uh, adopted. Now it, that it is 20 years old, the comprehensive plan, uh, if I recall, um, and there is a new one coming up, but there have been some more recent uh, studies that I think are also applicable, such as the, um, such as the, uh, Village Center Vision Plan. Um, although this, this application concerns a lot that is actually on the fringe of the R point, uh, excuse me, R12.5 zoning district, which is a residential district, uh, it abuts uh, the village business district. And the Southampton Village Center Vision Plan um, deals with. Uh, not only the actual zoning district, the village business district, but, but also the peripheral areas, uh, some of which are not village business like uh, Windmill Lane. And um, it also makes some recommendations and references to um, the existing pattern of development in the village center includes maps that include our, our parcel. Um, our parcel is actually, when I say our parcel, it's actually a lot that's owned by the village of Southampton and has been used or uh, was used for, for many decades as an ambulance garage. Before uh, the ambulance garage was erected, it was uh, a vacant lot. It has never been used as a single family residence, uh, to my knowledge. Um, but seems to have been uh, pretty much developed as an ambulance garage. And, and the character of the building sort of reflects its municipal intent and use. It's a, it's a brick building, uh, relatively small in scale. And uh, the goal here for the applicant is, and the applicant is part of the Hamptons, is to um, it, you know uh, use that lot and that building with some modifications to the building that are relatively minor and do not require any variance relief to um, convert it to uh, a food pantry use, very similar to the use that is now conducted in the Catholic Church at the end of Hill Street down the other end of the road. Um, that use has been going on for decades. The heart of the Hamptons use as uh, part of in the, in the church buildings 
um, as an accessory use to the church use. And the church now requires, um, they now require the space and have uh, asked the food pantry to uh, find another location um, for, their, for their operation. So this, this is what is being proposed. Uh, the food pantry will conduct itself in pretty much the same way that it conducted itself at the, uh, at the church uh, with uh, very few uh, tweaks, but it will, this site give it more space, more square footage and an opportunity to include uh, a walk-in refrigerator, which will be very useful to them. So it's actually a better site for them um, in terms, in, in some ways. They do not plan to have any food service or food preparation on this site. It is, can you hear me? It is not a wet use. There is no, no food preparation or use going on. There shouldn't be um, great uh, quantities of garbage produced from this, um, this organic garbage of any kind. Um, it's, it's based on donations that are made from companies, from individuals, from restaurants, from all sorts of uses and uh, canned and prepackaged food that is, is donated and, and sometimes purchased. The food pantry in the past, and this is the, the um, plan in the future, has been uh, open to clients twice a week, uh, two weekdays during the week, uh, where, and there is no, um, and basically the process has been to, to line up the cars and um, deliver stuff to the cars directly. People do not generally get out of the car and go to visit the food pantry themselves. But this, and this pattern will be continued. Um, it, the building itself will uh, have generally possibly five uh, employees at a time, uh, possibly two volunteers at any given time. And occasionally they'll have meetings that will involve more people. So um, I give you that background in terms of addressing the rest of the cr general criteria. And I'm gonna get back to those general criteria. Um, B under 116-1 is to protect the established character and social and economic well-being of both private and public property. Um, in this case, uh, we think the continuation of a service to the community use as the ambulance garage was, as the food pantry will be, is, is uh, protective of the established character. Um, this is a building that, that used to have ambulances uh, going, coming and going at, at all hours. Um, this, in fact, will be a bit quieter because it will not be open at night except for early evening hours and only on occasional basis for meetings. Uh, their, their mission will be accomplished uh, largely, largely during regular weekdays. And so we think that criteria is met. The next one is to promote the utilization of land for purposes for which it is most appropriate. And again, because of the historical community use of this facility, uh, we, we submit that this proposed use is going to preserve the quality of, of the existing neighborhood. And, um, and to this, I'll refer, uh, you know, going back to the master plan again, there is no suggestion in any of those plans that this lot be converted to a residential use. Um, it is uh, consistent, I think, with that, with that goal. D is to secure the maximum recharge in terms of fresh groundwater reservoirs and, and uh, watershed features. I think that's a, a criteria that um, is basically 
inapplicable to this. There are no uh, wetlands in the area. It is not really a watershed area. It will have no effect uh, that anyone can demonstrate on freshwater uh, or groundwater resources. It's going to have, you know, just one bathroom for use of the employees and basically that's it. Um, the next criteria is to protect and promote the fisheries and resort industries of the municipality. Again, that particular general goal and criteria isn't particularly applicable here. Um, but uh, I guess I, I would note that the building as it is now has floor drains uh, because uh, vehicles were repaired and washed and taken care of inside that ambulance garage. Um, those will be eliminated. So as part of this proposed renovation of the building. So actually it should have uh, the proposed use less impact on, on those uh, uh, water resources. The next is just to secure safety from fire, panic, flood, storm, et cetera, and to provide adequate light, air, and convenience and access, and to prevent environmental pollution. Again, uh, the, the, main, the, the existing building is gonna be used largely as a storage area for food supplies. That's the, the most of the main floor will be devoted to storage uh, supplies. And uh, there will be some office space on the second floor that is proposed to be converted out of existing attic space with the new dormer. Um, there are, I think, three, three offices up there. We have the architect here and he can, he can show you what the plan is, but um, that is uh, not going to, I think, unduly interfere with anybody's uh, light or create any fire or other kinds of dangerous situations. Um, the, the, the lot itself has five parking spaces on it now. And the, I, the proposal is, again, to use the Presbyterian Church parking lot, which uh, the Presbyterian Church has uh, agreed to do, um, to uh, devise and maintain an access for trucks delivering supplies to the building, as well as a, uh, a lineup process for certain hours of two weekdays, maybe two, three hours a day on two weekdays for clients to come and uh, pick up uh, prepackaged boxes of food that will be delivered to each of them. Um, this is a process that has worked well at the church and uh, we had a traffic, we, we, there is a traffic assessment that was part of the package completed by VHB Engineering, which uh, is attached to the package and concluded that uh, there would not be any adverse impact on traffic or parking conditions in the local area as a result of this proposed use. On the next criteria, criteria is to prevent overcrowding of land and buildings and, uh, and reduce or eliminate or avoid undue concentrations of people or population. And uh, this will add uh, literally no population to, to the village uh, at all. It's designed to serve an existing community that uses a similar site, um, essentially, you know, several blocks to the east or is it west? Sorry, it's to the west, several blocks to the west. Um, the uh, next criteria is to conserve the value of buildings and enhance the value of the land throughout the municipality. Um, and although we recognize that there are uh, a couple, uh, two really houses that are directly adjacent to this site, um, it, it has, 
the site has a long history, again, of, of being used for municipal purposes. And uh, there's, I think, no reason to find under the protocol that the food pantry plans to use that there will be any um, significant impact on the adjacent residences um, and, or impact on the value of their land, frankly. Um, the, uh, and here I'll point out that it is a type two uh, action under CICRA. Um, the, the actual uh, uh, operation of a food pantry, at least because it falls under a section of the CICRA statute that provides that construction or expansion of non-residential facilities involving less than 4,000 square feet of floor area and not involving a change in zoning or a use variance um, is uh, a type two action not subject to any further review under CICRA. Um, so the next, uh, Criteria under the generalized stuff is to provide housing sites for residents of the community compatible with their economic means. This will not do that, but it's, it's um, I think, another example of a criteria that is not relevant to our application. Um, the next criteria under J is to lessen and where possible to prevent traffic congestion on public streets and highways. Of course, there is uh, throughout the village and certainly through the central village uh, traffic, uh, particularly in the summer months, that uh, is of concern to the, and, and has been for a long time to the village as a whole. Um, this is um, so generally worse in the summer and exacerbated a bit at the end of a workday and the beginning of a workday as the so-called trade parade uh, moves through. Um, we've been careful in this application to design a protocol for service that, uh, that keeps, uh, the, keeps the most of the traffic away from the site at uh, the morning rush hour and the evening rush hour during the work days. And, uh, we also pointed out in our recitation that the um, food pantry uh, experiences much heavier demand in the winter months than it does in the summer months. Uh, the population in the, in the neighborhood, uh, the working, working population has uh, apparently a better time finding and and, and being employed on a, on a full-time basis in the summer than in the winter. And there are typically far fewer uh, uh, visits to the food pantry during the summer months when the traffic is greatest. Um, it goes on to say that uh, the, another goal is to eliminate non-conforming uses gradually. Um, I would, argue that this is not a non-conforming use. It's a pre-existing use as a municipal facility. It is owned by the village. And because it is owned by the village, it is very unlikely to ever be converted into a one family residence. Um, and uh, municipal uses uh, generally are uh, allowed under special exception permits in residential areas. And again, this is right on the edge. It is uh, on the cusp. The final one is to conserve and reasonably protect the natural scenic beauty and cultural and historic resource resources of the municipality and its environs. Here we have uh, a site that is directly across the street from a museum, uh, which gets a uh, fair amount of activity, but particularly I think on the weekends, probably more than during the week. Um, 
And, and same thing with, it's adjacent to a Presbyterian church, which uh, likewise it, uh, gets a fair amount of use. These are active um, cultural and religious centers uh, that again, are pri have probably more use and more visitors during the weekends when this, this food pantry will have less. So turning then, that was all for the first general condition. Uh, turning then to the rest of the list of the general conditions, B says the plot area is sufficient, appropriate, and adequate for the use and the reasonably anticipated operation um, thereof. So uh, we think that because uh, we've demonstrated that the uh, use was appropriate and quiet and uh, resulted in no issues at the church. And this is actually a larger site uh, for the, the food pantry operation, not for the entire church, but for that discrete application, it's a, it's a larger site and a, a more square footage to devote to it. It's um, clearly gonna be appropriate and adequate. Uh, the C is that the proposed use will not prevent the ordinary and reasonable orderly, excuse me, the orderly and reasonable use of adjacent properties, particularly where they are in a different district. So um, this is where I think uh, we need to uh, recognize that it is in a R 12.5 district, albeit on the very edge of it. And that, uh, and that there are residential neighbors, two of them, and an, a, an as a residential neighborhood uh, behind and, and to the west. Um, again, uh, I don't want to repeat the schedule that they're going to use uh, because I, I've done that uh, at, you know, in, in several instances in covering these criteria. But the building will be empty and dark almost all of the evening and weekend hours. Uh, and it is proposed to be screened with tall evergreens. And uh, the offices on the second floor, which will be used um, for meetings and employees use really only, are uh, Un, or within the existing um, attic space. Uh, there will just be one dormer added. And the dormer is actually below the line of the adjacent house and um, should not uh, probably emit as much light into the, the adjacent residential property as a full fully developed one family house with two stories would um, where, where it's used uh, on a daily basis. Um, and again, the, the, the driveway for this facility is at the other side away from the residential properties and the, the majority of the traffic will be going through the uh, parking lot of the Presbyterian Church, which again is on the other side um, of the um, adjacent neighbor. The next uh, criteria D is that the site is particularly suitable for the location of such use in the community. Um, we, we, uh, we, insists that it that it is a particularly suitable use for a number of reasons. A food pantry is is meant to be of service to uh, uh, people who are more in need or who are needy, who may have transportation issues, and accordingly, it ought to be you know close to central transportation facilities like bus routes and the like, or uh, other vehicles that are coming regularly into the village. And um, 
And, and, and it's appropriate that the site here is really a centralized site uh, surrounded by uh, other sites like the museum and the church use that are, that are also providing community services that these same, same people are encouraged to, to use and frequent. Um, it, it, the, the next uh, criteria is a bit of an anomaly because it says the characteristics of the proposed use are not such that its proposed location would be unsuitably near a church, school, recreational area, or place of public assembly. You know, our argument clearly is that uh, a food pantry should be close to and work in conjunction with, as it has in the past, uh, a church and other community facilities. Um, and, and that is the case here. Um, the next criteria is that the proposed use, particularly in the case of a non-nuisance industry, conforms with the definition of the special exception use where such definition exists. And in fact, uh, there is a definition of food pantry that has been adopted by the uh, Village Board of Trustees. And uh, this proposed use uh, is consistent with uh, that definition that has been adopted uh, by the Board of Trustees already. Um, the, The next criterion is uh, that access facilities are adequate for the estimated traffic from public streets and sidewalks so as to assure public safety and to avoid traffic congestion and further vehicular entrances and exits shall be clearly visible from the street and not be within 75 feet of an intersection uh, a street intersection except under unusual circumstances. Uh, once again, the traffic uh, study um, shows that this proposal meets those criteria. And uh, certainly you will have a chance to um, evaluate that more on your regular site plan uh, approval or site plan application process that we will be coming back to you on after after a, the Board of Trustees has uh, issued a determination, assuming that it determines that to grant the special permit application. Um, the next one is that all proposed curb cuts have been approved by the street or highway agency. Um, we will be using existing curb cuts, so there's no new curb cut uh, being proposed. Finally, there are uh, not finally, but next there are off street parking and truck loading spaces. Um, in any case, adequate number for the anticipated number of occupants, uh, including patrons, visitors, or employees, and that the layout of the spaces and driveways is convenient and conducive to safe operations. Um, and uh, again, this is where our protocol, which will be you know, uh, set forth uh, in, in, in writing and everything else, and it has been to uh, utilize a drive-through delivery service. Uh, and there, there should be, from everything we've analyzed and tested, um, plenty of space to accommodate that as well as the deliveries. Adequate buffer yards and screening are provided where necessary uh, to protect adjacent properties and land uses. Again, our building footprint will be exactly the same as the existing footprint. Um, there will be, you know, uh, some, you know, a typical provision for a dumpster area for and for garbage pickup. Again, the garbage should not be. Uh, uh, huge in nature, it will not be organic matter. 
Um, the next one is that uh, adequate provisions will be made for, oh, I'm sorry. The next one is that no outdoor sales or display areas will be uh, permitted in the front yard area of any business district. Um, this is not a business district technically, but um, nevertheless, it is. there is no uh, proposed display going to take place in the front yards uh, of this or the side yards of this uh, facility. Linda? Uh, yes. I think you skipped over K. K, sorry. That's okay. K is adequate provisions will be made for the collection and disposal of stormwater runoff from the site, you are correct, and of sanitary sewage, refuse, or other waste, whether liquid, solid, gaseous, or of other character. Uh, we uh, will be providing, and the plans show, the area where a dumpster will be located. Uh, we, do, we do not anticipate any uh, garbage that is uh, in, a, in excess of what is produced now at the other site at the, at the church and have every reason given our past history and usage to believe that the proposed uh, refuse area will be adequate. And uh, we are, we will comply with all uh, sewage requirements. Um, and again, that will be something that you will be considering further as part of your regular site plan approval process. Um, so then we get to the special conditions. I think that covers the general conditions. Um, I, I glossed over some of it. There's a more detailed uh, summary and an argument made in the, in the proposal that was submitted to the Board of Trustees. And again, we can demonstrate some of these things on the screen by posting the plans, uh, which we can get to in a minute. Here are the special conditions. The area of the lot containing the food pantry shall not, not be less than 10,000 square feet. The area of this lot is closer to 15,000 square feet. It is precisely 14,321 square feet in area. Uh, the second criteria is it shall not be located at a distance greater than 100 feet from a business zoning district. It is adjacent to the village business district. So that is certainly less than 100 square feet. Uh, uh, less than 100 feet distant, it's adjacent to it. The next one is that it shall not be located at a distance greater than 500 feet from a roadway right of way as defined by New York State Department of Transportation as a principal artery, a minor arterial, or a major collector street. And uh, with respect to this criteria, we attached a copy of the um, map from the Dep Department of Transportation, which um, diagrams the location in this area of principal arterial, minor arterial and major collector streets. And we are not greater than 500 feet from, from those streets. South Main Street is a major collector roadway and it is within 500 feet of 44 Meeting House Lane. Um, the next criteria is the lot containing the food pantry shall contain an existing institutional use or adjoin a lot that contains an existing institutional use. And in the case of an adjoining institutional use said adjoining use shall have frontage on the same roadway as the lot containing the food pantry. So again, um, this meets that criteria two, two ways. It is, has always been an institutional use. It is owned by the village. Um, as such, it has to be used for, you know, uh, village 
purposes or institutional sorts of community purposes, something that benefits the village. And it does have share road frontage uh, as with uh, the church, um, which is also, uh, I think you would consider it an institutional use. Um, the second, the, the fifth criteria E is that the lot containing the food pantry shall not contain an existing residential use. It does not. There is no residential use on this lot, or has there ever been? And finally, the number of food pantries permitted as a special exception use in the village of Southampton shall not exceed two at any given time. Uh, as far as we know, this will be the only one because as, as soon as it is able to be utilized as a site, the operation of the food pantry at the Catholic Church will cease and desist. It won't continue any longer. So uh, for the foreseeable future, there will be only one. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if there is a desire to, to see the plans posted up on the screen, we can, we can do that. Um, ben Chaliff is here. He is the architect to uh, address any um, questions people might have about the proposed site plan, which certainly you will review again in greater detail as part of the site plan application. But I'll turn it back to the board. Thanks, Linda. That Chairman, was very I'll, comprehensive. Thanks. I'll mention just briefly that at, at seven o'clock, the uh, architecture review board is going to meet. So we may get kicked off of the Zoom by then. So if the board needs additional time, we could talk about um, scheduling another time um, if we want to go past that time. Thanks, Alex. Um, I'm not sure how best to proceed. I'm sure the board has questions. Do we want to just um, start with the special exemption? You, you said like the, the list A through M and go through them individually and ask questions? Well, again, that's, that's really uh, the job of the uh, board of trustees. I, I think given the time constraints here, you could safely uh, skip the ones that are clearly inapplicable uh, to this application because they are generalized, but, th but that it's up to you. I'm not going to. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would suggest at least briefly going through um, A through, I think it was B through D. Okay. And maybe I and J. Okay. Okay. So B is the plot area is sufficient, appropriate, and adequate for the use and reasonably anticipated operation and expansion thereof. And I, and I would just point out that the, the special criteria does set forth um, a, an a adequate size for this use, and that's 10,000 square feet, which the site meets. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think the only word that in this um, clause that sort of comes to my attention is expansion. Well, we don't anticipate uh, any expansion except the addition of the dormer to create more office space on the second floor. And, um, and clearly, uh, since it's within the same footprint and no variance relief is is going to be required or requested, um, I think we could say that, uh, I think you could conclude that it does, um, is sufficient for the anticipated expansion. Is there a, a, a limit to the number of clients that you could serve? Uh, no, it varies. Uh, there is no per se limit. Uh, it tends to be somewhere around 60 clients in the summer months and uh, more 
in, uh, I, I think it was like closer to 200, sometimes in the, in the dead of winter. But again, they, they don't, they will not be parking and knocking on the door and they will be lined up at pre-appointed times and it, it, will, it will be a circulation. It's pre-appointed, okay. It's not like 200 cars are showing up at once. Well, there, there, there will be two days a week when they can, they can come for certain appointed hours, yes. Oh, okay, so there is a potential of that. Does the rest of the board have any questions or input? Well, I guess, yeah, I mean, the, the lease predated the special exception, um, but nothing in the lease would prevent the pantry from changing the schedule or is the village, you know, saying that they're going to keep to the current use and not expand the use because if, if we're being asked to evaluate it based on its current operation, but a, you know, a long-term lease is signed. Is there anything to prevent the use from changing? Well, the the village's the village board of trustees will be perfectly free to um, put conditions on on it, as they see fit on on the operation. Uh, we're 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 saying, um, and we're perfectly willing to stipulate to this that um, this protocol will be utilized. It is, it is the plan and what we're proposing to do. Um, so I, I don't, and, and we are, as the food pantry uh, is proposed to be the sole occupant uh, primarily of the building. I would also point out that it used to be, uh, it has been used more recently since the ambulance garage moved um, it's been used for COVID testing, and that that same um, that that same procedure was implemented with the COVID testing. Uh, cars came in, they lined up when there was a waiting line, and uh, people were uh, taken care of right there in their cars, um, and then they left. Um, it'll and it, it it worked for the COVID testing. Great, that's good to know. Trial run by fire. <laughs> yeah, but I guess the reason I'm wondering that because food pantries are usually attached historically or traditionally have often been in a church or in a synagogue or in a school. So they're kind of limited by the hours that of churches and schools, which are, you know, much more limited. So this, since it's a standalone and since there's a pre existing lease already with the village. You know, can can the neighbors or whomever be guaranteed that the use will be as described? Is 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 kind of the question. Well, uh, again, if if the board of trustees feels that it's necessary to stipulate that it will only be uh, used for pickup and deliveries uh, during certain weekday hours. Um, that's all within our proposal and we would have no objection to that. In fact, it's what we propose, so. Okay, thanks. Okay, anyone else? I just wanted to mention that they, they may want to adopt what they did with the COVID testing, which was assigning times. That's what I thought Linda was referring to, that it was like half hour windows during those two to three hour periods. I, I misunderstood you. Yeah, well, we don't, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that, I'll, I'll ask Molly to address this because I'm not sure that they always know exactly who is going to come on, on a given week. Uh, it's not necessarily the same, just like they didn't for COVID, but look, if, if, She's in the audience. Maybe she should introduce. She should address that because it's more of an operational thing. Okay. Kat, can you um, allow her in, please? You want Molly Bishop in, correct? Yes. Okay. Sure. I'll bring her right in. Thank you.
Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to address uh, what what Willa was asking. And uh, right now, we are open to clients Wednesdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, occasionally on Wednesdays, we do have three cars waiting for us to open, three or four cars. But then after that first few minutes, um, which certainly the parking lot could hold three or four cars while we wait to serve them. Um, but after that, it is a pretty um, steady, but not you know heavy uh, line of cars. Some you know they come uh, spaced out generally uh, uh, on their own. Uh, we have said that we would be open to modifying our schedule um, to make sure that it works best for the neighborhood. Um, if that means that Friday mornings just doesn't seem like a good idea anymore. We could switch to Wednesday, Thursday. If it seemed like too many people were coming and we wanted to expand that over three hours instead of two, we certainly would be open to that. We really are committed to being the best neighbors we can possibly be to both the business district, the church and the residents. And so we will do our best to, to just keep a close monitor on that and then adjust. Um, our clients are very open to adjusting. So we're not worried about inconveniencing people, uh, you know, with enough notice, uh, people have adjusted to a lot of changes in our operations over the years. Uh, and like Linda said, in the summer, we see 60 families total for the whole week. So that's over Wednesday and Friday. And then in the winter months, we're seeing about 150 families, um, again, over the, the, the two days. Um, and a lot of times families do carpool. So it's not 150 cars. A lot of times we have um, neighbors that pick up for each other or um, you know, neighbors that, that carpool together and come. Thanks, Molly. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm going to move on to see unless I'm, unless any other board members have questions. Okay, the proposed use will not prevent the orderly and reasonable use of adjacent properties, particularly where they are in a different district. I don't see how this use could affect anyone, any other, any adjacent properties, unless I'm missing something. Well, uh, uh, Tony, this, I don't know how, what people's background is. I've accidentally have modest background. I've been in the in the operation at, at the church for a large part of the period that Molly's predecessor was involved, Hilton Crosby came in on short notice and uh, I don't know what he's doing next. Thank goodness he got Molly to take over. I've known the operation in all of its, uh, and some of its board and the people that work there and everything else for, I can't remember the number of years. Um, I walk that distance frequently to walk from my house down by the blinking light by the reservation into the by the movie theater and back frequently. I've got data that's purely anecdotal. I've seen a couple of cars there. I've seen in the winter months, you know, pooling and otherwise. Uh, I count them. 20 to 25 because I keep track of the volume because I got people, you know, uh, I make donations and I got people dealing with food and everything else. It is clearly volatile. It's gone from Wednesdays in the morning, uh, with people pulling in, getting their food and generally going in and through the back parking lot around and out the other exit from the church, not doing that parking lot is very confusing because they it's get huge use for the nursery school. And the protocol has to be maintained there uh, with some rigor. I'm sure that's what Molly does now. I, I know that uh, Hilton struggled with it. Um, and 
I think, I don't know how the, villa, the trustees are going to do. We're, we're not proving this so much as saying if the trustees want to do this, what concerns us with the rest of the planning? I maybe, I can't remember who, who all was involved with it. Maybe Jane was with us. We were told that we had to approve the new ambulance barn because Meeting House Lane was entirely too crowded with the ambulances ever to be useful for the ambulances. And that Windmill Lane was a far wider and easy to use road. I've been through a lot of traffic studies. I've hired some. The traffic studies are governed by their assumptions. This is, this is going to, as long as the hospital doesn't move, which of course is happening every day now, but it hasn't yet, this is a still a very busy road. And I do not believe Meeting House Lane in this area, say from there to, to Little Neck, is anywhere near as wide as Hill Street. When 25 cars park, and they're good cars, they're, they're better than my cars. <laughs> I wish I owned some of the clients' cars that Molly's helping because they got good vehicles. And if they can carpool, that's wonderful. But they're good cars. They sit there patiently and they wait their turn and they turn in, you know, two or three at a time. And, and the workers come out and I guess give them bags and packages sometimes through the window. If that's going to be there, I hope there's some very specific agreement with the Presbyterian Church. I'm not a congregate there. I go to it often. I know they're active on weekends. I've had children go to the, uh, uh, children's activities there over the years in the evenings and, and late afternoon. So it's not a just Sunday operation. And you can talk to Tom Edmonds and the people next door. I, I parked in the parking lot often to go to stuff at the historical museum. Other people, a lot of people have, it's been crowded. So how Molly's gonna coordinate with these other institutions, which Linda, Linda laid out the whole thing. I'm sure what you went through, Linda, was in the file. I'm on grandparent duty unexpectedly, and I won't be back in Southampton until uh, a Tuesday night. So I, I couldn't read the stuff except I got it at four o'clock over the internet and uh, uh, three o'clock over the internet because Kathy sent it to us, thank goodness. And I read it as fast and as long as I could until I couldn't get in through the to Zoom. And I mean, it's all, it's all standard stuff. It's got nothing really to do with the technicality of it or for the neighbors and all, but it has to do with what you keep referring to, the plan. And Molly's in charge. I mean, if, if she can get the people to agree to get the food, it's a great idea. It's a wonderful thing to have that capacity. But how it's going to coordinate with the Presbyterian Church, as, as let's call it in the shoulder of COVID. COVID made the institution. It increased its, its likelihood exponentially. It's faded some, but not completely, because the community keeps growing and these, these families need help and they're used to it. I'm sure it's great for them to have. And, you know, summer, winter, so forth. But how she coordinates with those two institutions is, is going to be the key to the success. And the complaints will go to whoever's been elected. They'll, they'll call somebody up in Village Hall and say, how can you let these guys get in the way of something or other? And if it's in, if it's, if it's out of the, the, the crush of getting from the hospital elsewhere on that road, that road gets a, a traffic and surges. If you, if you deal with Hill Street or Job's Lane, you know it is surge traffic. And I guarantee you the traffic study, anyone who does it is short of data and short of conclusions because they haven't driven it all hours of the day and the, and the, and the, the, the events that, that, that take over. I mean, are you going to Molly close for the 4th of July? I mean, I don't think so. I mean, so the operation, the village trustees need to get, the, in my view, as if, the, if any of my fellows on this board agree, Will has spoke up immediately. Your instincts are perfect. So what, 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 what's going to hold me? You're, it's a service business. What's going to happen to the service as it goes forward? That'll, that's going to be the key. And the traffic is really an issue. That's why. I think, can I just we, address we a little bit? Form. Yeah. Um, so right now at Hill Street, like you said, um, 
we hold the cars outside on Hill, on Hill Street. We don't yep. pull into the parking lot because of the pathway, the, the crosswalk there for the preschool. So yep. cars wait on Hill Street. And as you said, there's, you never see more than three or four cars waiting at a time. We can certainly accommodate them waiting within the parking lot of the Presbyterian Church. Oh, wait, waiting in the parking lot, but I see 25 cars on Hill Street. No, no, that has not happened in, that has not happened in two years. Um, maybe the height of COVID. Well, Molly, I love you dearly, but I counted them. I walked by them. Well, I, count them. I don't no. know. No, I, maybe you went, went by when there was a funeral. <laughs> because no, 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 no funeral. I know that was, Street, that's another problem. Our clients. Our gets in the way. Well, okay, but our, our clients, we never have more than three or four cars lined up out there at this point, uh, just for the month of- well, That's good. Well, that's 20, good. That, if that's the case, I haven't been there in a month, so maybe it's it yeah. changed since January and February. Um, I would say it must have, but um, but also the other thing is that um, we we are closed on holidays. We do have um, letters of support from both the Historical Museum and the Presbyterian Church that um, are looking forward to us making this move. We do, as Linda said, we don't um, offer programs on weekends or evenings when the church and the historical museum offer the majority of their programming. Exactly, I understand that, but I'm just worried about the people complaining. If, if you get three or four cars, it's perfect. But if they're- Yeah, but if we also, in, at Hill Street, we've never had a complaint. And also for the last four months or so, they've been putting in the new gas lines. And so we've had to modify the way we handle- yeah. Every day it's been different. This side of the road's closed, that side of the road's closed, this side of us is closed, that side's yep. closed. And we've accommodated it every time. We've never had a single complaint from a resident on Hill Street. We haven't had to call the, the South yep. Hill Village Police have told us they're on hand anytime we feel like we have yep. many people coming and we have never had to call them. Um, so like I said, March of 2020, when the whole world stopped, uh, Hilton served 800 families in that single month. That is oh, yeah. heard of. It was unbelievable. Never I just no, replicated I'm, that. I we understand never, what you're saying. Um, we were we so, got all sorts of da stuff about moving the ambulance down to take all that land by the dog park and all because sure. your road was unacceptable for traffic. It was the major acumen. They had a traffic but study, I would also engineering say engineering and everything. But if you've got cars that are out on that road, we As would, opposed to the two or three, or maybe four or five coming through the parking lot, I'm just, I want, uh, you can do it. No, we wouldn't, charge. we wouldn't line cars up on the road. Excuse me, excuse me, do something. Alan, Alan and Molly, I, both, all of your points are very well taken, and I think one of our recommendations to the trustees needs to be that we're concerned about traffic and traffic flow. We're, we're not accomplishing anything right now, except yeah, that we're, we're all very I mean, concerned about. No, I don't want to argue against. It. I just say she's she's if she, she got it down to three or four, tell the trustees that because that makes this the right. approval of this a, a far better for all concerned. And we're uh, here to. Well, Alan, to, there, there is actually a, a traffic study that's compiled in the materials that were distributed by the building department on Thursday. I see that you're on that email and Alex Wallach did send up a follow-up email to everyone. Um, so if you didn't receive that- I, didn't, I, said, I did not receive that email. Maybe it went into junk because I, I love traffic studies. I read them all the time. The, the one who said the latch was perfect said the traffic would be good at Moses Lane, the furthest street away they could find. I mean, I I read the studies. That the building department <laughs> to make sure that you're receiving their, their emails because there, there was a fairly substantial submission on this file, including that traffic study, which was also substantial, so. Well, I'd have read it in the village hall if I wasn't babysitting. I just got caught for the last three weeks. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm happy to forward it to you. And I think you said that Kathy did as well. But um, I just would, I would suggest that um, the traffic study does go into details on the number of um, cars entering and exiting um, and how that would affect the traffic on Meeting House Lane. It might be useful for the board to understand how cars are going to enter, where they're going to line up. And I'm sure that's yeah. something that you've been thinking about as you've been planning, you know, that yeah. you're going to have people line up in their cars and then uh, you will deliver the bags of food to them. Um, so maybe that information, you know, even if it's a diagram that shows where 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 are the cars going to enter, 
Where are they going to exit? Where are they going to line up? And how does that work in the context of the site? Exactly. Um, I think that will go a long way. Kathy's right. You know, it's it's the flow makes the big difference. Sure. If, if if 20 come at once, you, you, you'll have a problem like you do on Hill Street when we don't have all the guys rebuilding the conduits. I understand Hill Street's been a mess. But they won't have to line up on Meeting House Lane. They're, and by the way, they, no, parking Molly, they don't parking complain way. about Hill Street because they don't complain for funerals or for the temple. And they don't complain because everybody parks on the right. It's a big wide street compared to, to Meeting House Lane. And so that that's the burden you, you've got. But we would people. accommodate all the cars within the parking lot. And the cars okay. on site for 30 Understood. seconds, you know. Understood. That's okay. fine. That's so fine. Top top of our letter is going to be traffic flow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I'm not opposed. I think it's a great time. idea, but I'm just looking at what happens if if you uh, sustain the burden of the ambulance department claim was why they had to spend seven million dollars to move. <laughs> you're you're on the other side of that equation. I'm I can't. I, that's not my. <laughs> yeah, I'm rooting for you. Yes. Right. So I'm rooting for you. We, we have 15 minutes left, and we have to have a document okay, by the end of I'm this sorry. meeting. So, um, I've been there. Traffic. <laughs> a A number one. Traffic and traffic flow, which will be. I would also add that the engineer that did the traffic study, um, in going through our documentation of the number of clients that we have and the staff that we have said that essentially it was like throwing a penny into the ocean compared to the traffic that is already going back and forth that the neighbors would never even notice uh, the number of cars um, that that would be coming to us. Okay. All right, so um, D is the site is particularly suitable for the location of such use in the community. I think we've kind of covered that. It, is there, does anybody want to add to the suitability? There's no better site. <laughs> well, I, I do feel personally that this is a, a very, um, this is a needed service in our community. And if we can fit it in, we should. Yep. yep. Just want to put that up there. All right. Um, I think I'm going to skip right down to I. There are off street parking and truck loading spaces, at least in the number required by the provision of 116-14 of, of this chapter. But in any case, an adequate number of the anticipated number of occupants, both employees and patrons or visitors. And further, the layout of spaces and driveways is convenient and conducive to safe operation. That's another thing that I think we've covered in the past 10 minutes. And Molly, you made it really clear that there's no intent for traffic to line up on Meeting House Lane because it's impossible. There's no space there. People will be directed into the parking lot and you're going to decide how. We have a staff member that stands there and directs cars and we have staff and volunteers all throughout the uh, drive through process to keep cars moving and um, the other thing I would add to this is that also the Village Board of Trustees in passing the definition for a food pantry um, superseded this by saying that uh, a food pantry must have five parking spots, which we, um, we do have five parking spots um, on site. Great. And then um, item J is adequate buffer yards and screening are provided where necessary to protect adjacent properties in land use. I saw, I, I took a look at the um, the new site plan that is in the, was in the Dropbox file that was passed around and the screening looks adequate to me. I think also that's another thing we certainly would be open to recommendations on screening as part of the site plan review. Um, you know, we have no opposition to more beautiful. You, you muted yourself. I'm sorry. Yourself. Well, we have no opposition to more screening. <laughs> you know, we want it I think on, to I think nice. on the east, I think on the east side of the property, it might be the height of the screening 
not necessarily because of the structure that you're moving into, but the structure next to it. Mm -hmm. And that's easily resolved with the selection of the proper plant material. And all we, all we there's already existing, <laughs> well, there's already existing probably eight foot at least arborvitae yeah. there. And so we are proposing a secondary row. And uh, we modified our plans to move uh, the walk in to the back. And so we're going to keep the existing uh, tree there too. So um, there's already significant screening uh, that goes beyond the roof line of the building as it is. Does the, does the property to the east have windows that would look down into this property? They do have windows. They do. That would, like so our that, windows would come in between their, their two floors probably. Right, but maybe if the second row you planted grew to the point where it could offer yeah. some screening to their second story down into the property, they might appreciate that. So yes. Yeah. And then another meeting, I'm on mute. Um, okay. Our, we're, we're running, we're running quick, very quickly low on time. And I just want to, I guess, open up, up to the board. Are there, are there any other general concerns that you have that we should put in our recommendations? to the trustees. Well, I guess while we're everyone's here, I just wanted to ask, because Linda's report said that there would be um, frequent garbage removal. So I just was wondering how frequent that is and then whether the dumpster is an open dumpster, but you mentioned that it's not um, any organic food. So um, that, that was one, I just wanted, wondered what um, that schedule would, would be in terms of sure. the residential neighbors. So, and then, oh, just oh, one more thing. What, number two is that I read something where the garage doors are going to stay, but do, do, in terms of food being kept there, are garage doors, does that make it, you know, a conditioned space where, you know, um, that would be safe for food, you know, um, yeah. protection? So, with the garbage, um, right now we only have once a week garbage pickup at the church also. The majority of our garbage is cardboard from boxes. Um, the rest of it is just office paper. Um, we don't, as Linda said, we don't throw out food, we give it away. Um, and we would set up uh, a schedule along with the church. So the church gets their garbage picked up from Norsic, as would we. And we would just, you know, schedule to be on the same pickup. So no additional um, inconvenience to anyone. Um, although the church did say they sometimes get their garbage picked up too early for the pastor, we might try to figure that out for her to sleep <laughs> for 30. You know, if, if you um, ever, Molly, if you ever have any organic waste, there's a, um, a service that comes around and picks it up and composts it. Oh, yeah. So you could I, hop I've on board that. with them. Yes, that, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the garage doors, the plans actually show we, we would close in one side of the garage and we would try to match the existing brick um, to close in and then match um, windows the way they would be at the top of the garage door. So from the road, it's not going to look that much different, but we do need to be able to climate control it to make it safe for food. Um, so that would be the plan. And, and then to try to keep the other garage door, but secure it enough from the elements um, so that we could open it up and easily take in deliveries um, with a pallet loader. Okay. Great. Anything else? So I guess that's it. Um, Alex and Kathy, how do we go about generating this letter to the trustees? I think Kathy and I can work on a draft together. And uh, it, it sounds to me like the, the conditions that uh, the board wants the board of trustees to consider uh, is just the traffic and traffic flow on site. Yep. Was there anything yeah. else? Well, I think that the willingness to modify schedules as needed. Um, 
I think the first year is probably going to be a learning year, but I think I think one of the things that came out in this meeting is that if there was willingness of um, part of the Hamptons to modify their schedules if needed to to, to schedule deal with yeah to, to schedule pickups. If, um, coordination with the church. Yeah, that's those are the only points that I picked up in my notes while we were talking. Yeah, I understood. Uh, Alan, I, I thought Willa's point might be that if, if, if Molly's going to make changes, which you may need to, when the world changes, COVID will go, so forth, the village needs change, you got, they'll be approved uh, routine, routinely by the, the uh, the first Presbyterian church in the United States and, and this and Tom Edmonds next door, but it seems to me they need to be notified or approved by the mayor or something like that. So the village is responsible for saying it's okay. Okay, I mean, that's a good point. You need, it seems to me that was the sense of what she said and I think she's right. It's not, it's not just carte blanche because Molly may not be there forever. It was, so what, what's, it's, what's next, what else are you gonna do? Maybe. Maybe the my friends at the reservation want to sell marijuana too. You know, you, you gotta have some uh, municipal restraint. Yeah, you guys Understood. can you you and Kathy can phrase it right. Just say there's some review when okay. the, the board will confer with the village trustees or something like that. All right, we're, we're about to that. get kicked off. So um, okay. I guess if anybody thinks of something, just send shoot me an email or shoot in and copy Kathy and Alice. But other than that, I think I'm gonna move that we close the meeting. Can I get a second? <laughs> second. Thank, thank you, Alan. <laughs> um, and, and thank you, Linda. I just wanna thank did, you for a very- Can we vote? Pardon me? Did everyone vote? I didn't, oh, I didn't hear. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.